Hey everyone, I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm joined today by Frank Carlberg, pianist, composer, and faculty member at the New England Conservatory. Frank is here to show us how to compose creatively using triads. Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, the idea of triads um, uh, came to me realizing that although there is uh, a, a limited number of traditional triads, some of the movement uh, from from certain triads to others is actually kind of not utilized so much. So I wanted to kind of explore a little bit of what this might mean in practical terms. First of all, I would say that um, one way to look at harmony uh, in general is to kind of think of it as having two dimensions. One is um, uh, color, uh, and the other one is movement. And uh, color is vertical, and movement is horizontal. So when we're working with triads, we're actually kind of using uh, very common uh, colors, um, uh, as in the, the, the common triads, and uh, when uh, when we're exploring this, we're kind of exploring more what can we do in terms of the, the, the horizontal movement to make something that might be of interest to us. Um, uh, the, I've, I've kind of expanded a little bit the triad uh, um, concept here, very little. Uh, we will kind of think about the four most common triads, major, minor, uh, diminished, and augmented. And I've also kind of added to it a suspended triad, which would be one, four, five, if you go by the kind of the major scale steps. Um, so we're going to kind of focus on those and uh, and i would also say that maybe um when we're working with this it's actually interesting to 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 set even more limitations so i will kind of mostly focus on major and minor triads and let the other triads kind of happen when there seems to be kind of a need for them to to enter into the picture uh after all limitations are kind of uh uh, they kind of drive us to to creativity many times rather than uh, the opposite. And we have um, the triads listed there on top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these tri uh, some of these triads and start with any triad, really. I'm going to focus mostly on major and minor, like I said. And, um, and then I'm setting parameters for the movement how the voices move. And we're going to kind of deal with just kind of a three-part thing. Of course, this is all uh, can can uh, be something else uh, for you in the future. Uh, three-part thing. And the first example there has uh, uh, a voice leading, which uh, is uh, limited to major and minor second movement for any of the voices. And then the, uh, on the second system, we see two common tones and one tone moves. So we will have something, for instance, like this in this case. The third system will have uh, one common tone between any uh, adjacent triads and two tones moving. So in this case, I'm playing these, by the way, in open uh, voicings, just to kind of give you a stronger sense of that these are voices rather than just kind of a vertical structure. So this is the third system, uh, one common tone, two tones moving. And then the last system has uh, all three tones moving still using the same kind of parameters or rules for the for the voice leading which is the whole steps or half steps mm -hmm. 
you can kind of play around with this. Of course, you might find that there's two or three of these movements that you you can that you discover that you find it interesting. You can create sequences, and once you're kind of in the middle of the process, and you can kind of throw out the rules and kind of just go with uh, with your instincts and and what what your ear tells you and where the movement needs to be going. There's also uh, you know, these are just kind of very basic harmonic structures that moving in different ways. Uh, then you might have a melodic uh, uh, linear kind of a melody. Um, and that can either emphasize the notes that, that are in the chords, or it can be complementary uh, contrasting to the notes that are in the chords. Or these triads actually might lead you to writing linear things over something that is actually not the, 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 the original harmonic um, um, uh, progression. And before we uh, listen to something, I the last thing I would like to say is that you, you, you want to kind of also kind of see what happens if you kind of group these harmonic movements in, in, in different ways, kind of pacing them in different ways. Maybe you have a harmonic phrase that's two chords, maybe you have a harmonic phrase that's three chords, and it kind of spotlights um, uh, things very differently. So now I think we could kind of move to, to a piece that I wrote that it kind of is in a very simple way, kind of based on this. It It is, um, uh, focusing on these, this kind of triadic movement and the melody, if it is indeed a melody, um, kind of um, does not necessarily emphasize the, the, the harmonic notes, but it's kind of a complementary to it. This is from a recording that I did with the uh, Argentine vocalist Roxana Ahmed. This one is called Los Trabajos y las Noches, and it's, uh, it's being released on Latin. So. This example, I, I, I use these triads in a very, very clear, uh, simple way with uh, with no real kind of change in harmonic rhythm and so on. But you can, of course, export them in many, many different ways. Um, anyway, I hope this was helpful and hope uh, that you can find some, some interesting uh, directions. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos down below. To watch our full-length events and participate in live Q&As with our presenting artists, head to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.